cities this holiday season kmoj invites you to jam to a new jingle <laughs> KMOJ's 15th anniversary and holiday party. Drop it. Special holiday appearance by Mr. and Mrs. Santa Claus, who came all the way from the North Pole to get busy with your power station. I need a new house and lots of money to Happy birthday, KMOJ! <laughs> KMOJ is basically the station I listen to. They play a lot of local talent, you know, which a lot of stations don't. And I think we need that in Twin Cities. It's, it's a station that has the Minneapolis sound. I like the gospel. I like the rhythm and the blues. I like the entire network. I love the morning show. That's really good. And I also love the black history programs they have in there as well. They play the most progressive rap music and dance music. They're closest to New York that they go. Because it's the best black station around here. Yeah? Yeah, for any kind of reason. Keep your doll right where it's at. Channel 2. Hit it! Jet, Jet Shaw. Yo! Jet Shaw. Yo! Jetty, Eddie, 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 Shaw. Yeah. The wind from our body rock. Yeah. It's DMC. It's to all the home boys. We go to rock a funky beat. With the human beat box. And to the sucker MC. The is DJ name. Master Doc and we'll repeat it if we have to. We're going to rock it from the night to the break of day. Call the co rocket on KMO. This is the operation manager, young man by the name of Chico Edna. How you doing? He controls what goes on air, off air, through the air, and without the air, there is no air. Think about that one. You're full of air. <laughs> We were built so how'd you, how'd you by the community, on? for the community. Pretty much 95% of what we broadcast is geared towards an African-American community, quite naturally, because we're the only really true uh, urban contemporary black, uh, black-owned, black-operated radio station in the Twin Cities. FM 899, Triple the Music. Good morning, Twin Cities with the Flowers and Company, along with Vernizia this morning at 22, 22 past 7 o'clock this morning. Currently right now, 23 degrees at the airport, 24 degrees in downtown Minneapolis. I'd like to say a wake-up call goes out to Stacy this morning and Rico from St. Paul, and also to Mr. and Mrs. Johnson of South Minneapolis. Wake-up calls this morning. Good morning, Vernizia. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing okay. How about you, Dory? It's Friday. It's the weekend. Yes, we're always happy on Friday, aren't we? That's right. Day day. <laughs> This is what we've worked very hard on in the last couple of years is make sure that the community could see that. We clean up the air sound. We clean up the scratchy records. We clean up the skip records. We throw away the turntables. We get new turntables. We get CDs. We get whatever it takes to keep that sound disciplined and clean. Currently right now, 24 degrees in downtown Minneapolis. And if you have a birthday request or know somebody that has a birthday, give us a call on the power line at 374-5615. Happy birthday to you. I'm going to check in with Bonnie McKay, a new attitude. Good morning, Bonnie. Good morning, Dorian. How are you? How are you doing this morning? Pretty good. You get all your Christmas shopping done? Uh, not yet. Um, <laughs> last minute, last as usual. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, Bonnie, I believe we got a phone caller on the air. All right, go ahead, call. Hello, Bonnie. Uh-huh. I breastfed two children, and my breasts have, like, little or no form to them now, and I like to do something to build my breast muscles back up. Well, let's see. You're going to have to... You can start with uh, push-ups. Uh, women have a natural tendency to take care of everyone and everything else first and not themselves, and I just wanted to to be able to, to get the information to them and say, hey, you know, you can take control of your life. You can make the changes necessary. This is how you do it in very simple, common sense, everyday language. Some people in the community are saying, well, you know, your sound is so clean now. Some people think that we've gone over. Some people think that we're commercial uh, because we've taken public service announcements and added a little humor and a little flavor to them like you would normally hear on a, a regular FM or AM station. A word to all those Twin City radio stations out there. 
perpetrating the KMOJ sound. You can't touch this. When it comes to playing Janet Jackson, Jesse Johnson, or David Pista, you can't touch this. some wrecks in effect, Karen White, and even Sheena Easton. You can't touch this. The hottest radio on radio, 89.9. You can't touch this. Known to most of us little folks as the thousand watt giant. You can't touch this. And what I really like about them is that they'll always give local artists a chance. They'll always play the local artist music on here, where most stations won't until it becomes national. Then they'll put it on. KMOJ is always on it. KMOJ played all of what that so-called Minneapolis sound was before any radio station in the Twin Cities. I basically open a challenge to any radio station out there that says that they played Prince or The Time or Jimmy Jam, Terry Lewis, Michael Jackson, Janet Jackson before we did. That is not true. Okay, then there's LaSalle Gabriel who will be performing coming up this Sunday. Just tuned in, we're talking with LaSalle Gabriel. He'll be performing at Camel J's 15th anniversary and holiday party coming up this Sunday at the Glam Slam in Minneapolis. Camel J. Camel J. What'd you say? What'd you say? It's 104. It's 104. You got the wrong station. <laughs> and now at this present time, we'll sneak over into the newsroom. Yeah, there's little people in here trying to run and hide. Well, it's not going to work. Okay, because I tell them I will pick them out. Okay, we'll start in this particular room. Okay, in this particular room here, this is the newsroom. Yeah, there's one of the bodies there. He's trying to hide. <laughs> But everything that goes on in this office basically is controlled by her, Bernicia Sims. She's a news director. And now it's time to go black in history. Adam and Eve's faithful bite from the apple of knowledge came 200,000 years ago. Some anthropologists say that the plains of Africa, which now comprise the still growing sub Saharan region, was the Garden of Eden about 200,000 years ago. There's um, something that comes from the Associated Press called Press Clips, and it has news from all over Africa. And it's a useful tool to use because not all the time do you get good news from the wire on Africa, and it's good to throw in some things that make it more pertinent to African Americans. And usually what I get from the wire is state and local news, world and national news, and sports news. And sometimes there's entertainment tidbits. And Dorian. Yes. Who's got the number one song of the year? The number one song of the year. According to the latest Billboard magazine, it's Wilson Phillips' Hold On. Wilson who? <laughs> the easiest way to do it is to make a ponytail on the very front of your forehead. I like to look at CNN, um, Donahue, Oprah, and Sally Jesse Raphael, and Geraldo to keep up with what topics are hot. And then usually we use those sometimes during the 820 interviews. We have different people come in. Like this morning, we had people from St. Anne's, which is a homeless shelter for women. And we were discussing what's significant to them and what kind of things they're trying to do for homeless women. We like to get out in the uh, community a little bit more, but that takes a lot of money. We're not a commercial radio station. If we was a commercial station, we would be out there every day for the community. But we try to do the best job we can do to get out there in the community. You know, when we see groups of white youth hanging together, we don't refer to them as a gang. Right. Um, we do that with, with people of color, youths of color, who are hanging around together. I think that's, that's inappropriate. And as you look, there's a Christmas tree. That means it's Christmas time. Nine fifty-four. Now do it for us this morning, Bernice. Yep, time to go get some breakfast. You have a good day, Bernice. You too. Then. And Twin Cities, you take it like be polite. Make sure you take your time and do it right. A lot of people listen to us. I think. I think black, white. Hmong, Latin, uh, 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 everybody listen. I think teens, um, I think uh, uh, senior citizens, uh, because we offer something for everybody. You're listening to the station that triples the music. 
This is the wrap room. Everything beyond this door. Uh, it's an office that's conducted by Michael Mack. He's one of the rapologists, shall we say, at KMOJ Radio. There's a lot of closet rap lovers out there. You know, they really don't want and they don't want anybody to know that they listen to rap music, but they do, in fact, listen to rap music. You know, it's like I get calls. You know, when I when I'm doing certain contests. You know, I'll, I have to ask their age and stuff. So I'm like, well, how old are you? Well, I'm uh, um, 45. I'm like, oh, and you're up at this time of the night listening to rap music. You know, my show's on Friday nights from 10 o'clock to 2 in the morning. And it's like, oh, you are up at 1 o'clock in the morning listening to rap music, huh? Step into the AM. Check out the new hype on the one and only rap show in Minnesota, Street Beat. Turn that damn music down. No, no, no. If you want to hear... You know, rap music, this is the only station to take. Different messages in rap music, you know, and a lot of people don't, they don't take heed to that. You know, they just, oh, it's just rap, it's just a lot of you know, mumble jumbo, but it's not, you know, they're actually, rappers are actually saying something. You know, there are some rappers that do talk about themselves and, you know, they brag and boast. No, we're the baddest of the bad. Cool and the cool, I'm PMC, I rock and roll. Oh. DJ run, I rock and roll. But there are a lot of rappers out there who try to get points across and their messages across to the young people today. Five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. Yeah. Older people don't see, you know, some people don't see as rap is not, you know, a music kind of thing, you know, people listen to. But they you telling us most about drugs and don't use them or AIDS or whatever, you know. I think that's a positive thing for them to say, you know, so they let they us know not to use it. They just got their own way of saying it to communicate to, uh, to our age, you know. Because yeah. how we sitting there listening, well, don't do this and don't do this. This is a funner way to yeah. put it, you know, because that's the kind of music we like, like to listen to. Yeah. Right now there's this big thing going on uh, within... Uh, Safe sex. Just keep in mind when Jimmy grows, it grows, it grows, it grows so let it. But keep in mind about the epidemic. When Jimmy releases, boy, it releases. What do you do about all these diseases? You know, they're saying, yeah, we do have sex, but we are safe about it. You know, we do use condoms and, you know, all the, the birth control devices. Now in winter, AIDS attacks. Run out and get your Jimmy hat. They cost so little for a pack of three. I know some people used to say, well, it wouldn't last long, but now they can tell that it's lasting a and long they're, like time. Like they're trying to get they rid of it. They used to say it. that it didn't last long. It wasn't going to last long. It was just going to fade away. I know because my music teacher actually said that before in school. Before. I was like, well, actually, I think it it's might last long longer because than it has a lot of rhythm. It brings back some of the old yeah. And a lot of people are listening to it. One of the main groups that are, you know, are really in it is public enemy you know they, they're telling you what's going on within the government and everything and uh, making you aware of what's happening you better wake up and smell a real flavor cause 911 is a fake life saver so get up and get 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 down 911 is joking yo town a lot of people feel that they're they're uh, militant but actually they're you know they're really not you know they're, they're just speaking on what they see and, and partially from their experience, you know. Two Live Crew, they talk about sex all the time. That's all they talk about, sex, 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 sex. I'm like a dog in heat, a freak without warning. I have an appetite for sex. Cause me so horny. Um, what else I got here? Uh, I have a whole crate of records here. Well, this song right here that I just played, uh, Erase Racism, is one of the best so far that I've heard, you know, because they're talking about uh, black people and white people, you know, all creeds coming together as one, is, you know, instead of just excluding one another. Color or creed is no need for a man to bleed. I believe we all breathe the same seed, unless it's diluted, something that intruded. 
Then I see your family tree was uprooted. So don't be foolish if you're Jewish or Hindu. The racial manual is the evil that men do. It's, it's bad out now. It's so bad now. Crime and, you know, AIDS and drugs, it's just bad, you know. Is it scary really? being young? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is because you don't know where you're going. You don't what's know what's going to happen get, next. Yeah, you just don't know because it's so bad everywhere. It's not Life one place, it's everywhere. Well, who could I say? They talk about uh, Ice T, uh, Easy E, and uh, Ice Cube. They talk about a lot of violent things, but yet they're telling you from what they see from living in California, you know, in the hardest part of California. You know, that's, this is stuff, stuff that happens in California every day a week. Think we got knives and guns? We got bombs, kid. Blow up your whole block. You hear the gunshots. Throw you in the syndicate cellar and let your body rot. <laughs> X-Clan, they teach about, you know, they're trying to, to have black people really research uh, the heritage. Yes, it gets blacker with a Nat Turner lick. Martin, Adam, Malcolm, Huey, there's a party at the crossroads. Karras One, uh, he talks about a lot of different things. He talks about beef. Beef, what a relief. When will this poisonous product cease? He tells you what they do to a cow. Let us begin now with the cow, the way it gets to your plate and how. You know, there's 21 drugs pumped into a cow before they kill it. 21 different drugs are pumped into the cow in one big lump. So just before it dies, it cries in the slaughterhouse full of germs and flies. You know, and then they, they kill it, and then automatically they just freeze it. So you'll consume the FDA can care less. They'll sell you donkey meat and say it's fresh. fresh. For 1990, you suckers. Twin cities, be good. Do the right thing. Get out there and shovel some snow this morning. <laughs> it's like the community. We're all one big family, you know. And it's like I'm all I'm doing is, you know, exposing them to something that they're not on to. Camo J. Who's that? Three times dope. Not the three times dope. The one before that. Oh, that was uh, what was that? Dangerous Dane. Dangerous Dane. Yeah. It, it makes me feel real good, you know, to be an active part in the community, you know, because it's like without this radio station, you know, the community has nothing. You know, basically they don't have anything, you know. They can listen to LOL or one-on-one, -on -one, but it's not going to be the type of music that they want to hear, you know. And all I do is I provide, you know, the teens in this town that don't get exposed to the rap music, I expose them to it. Nobody rocks your body better than 89.9 FM KMOJ. The Body Rocker. Anything else is just noise. When you go out the city, you know, the radio starts to die down, you know, so there's a lack of kilowatts there to hear the station. You can't pick it up anywhere, not unless you're sitting right in front of the place, you know. There's a lot of people in St. Paul and in certain neighborhoods that they, they just break their neck of trying to get Camel J. They'll try to put a, a wireless uh, antenna in the back of the receiver to try to tune it in and all this. But sometimes, like they say, in the last couple of years, they say they can't get us because, see, they're putting up new construction downtown, and that blocks the signal. Just a little thousand-watt giant. As far as TMOJ, I think I'll lose that somewhere around uh, about uh, Calhoun Lake out there. I've sat with people who've had other radio stations. It was like battle of the radio station. Most of the time I work out at Minnetonka, and, uh, I just can't catch a camel J out there. I, I haven't got it going up north too far, just northeast. Just a little thousand watt giant. Thousand watt giant. Thousand watt giant. Now we need a little bit more. Now we need to reach the people over in the west end of St. Paul and, and out in some of the other suburbs that not only like the music that we play, but like the message that we're bringing on a daily basis. It used to shut off, shut off about uh, 38th Street, but it, then it extended a little bit. 
I think we need a lot more kilowatts far so as... When we do get that power increase and that, that antenna replacement, um, we'll be where we need to be. And I think people will see it and they'll feel real good about this radio station, better than they are right now. Well, I'll check it out tonight when I head back to Hopkins and see how far it's going. I'll call you and let you know. You've locked it down to the best around. 89.9 KMOJ. It's not a glam slam. You're missing a great time. KMOJ is having its 15th anniversary and holiday party there. So if you're in the vicinity, try and stop by and check us out, okay? We're going to get into some more continuous good music. You know, Christmas is... Right well, I'm trying to keep the Twin Cities happy right now. <laughs> Those people that couldn't go, they're at home listening to their radio. So I'm here trying to give them some good music. They listen to me every Sunday. Faithful audience, so I try to be here for them. I could have took off tonight, but... Nah. KMOJ Radio. Can I get, um, can I request, um, LL Cool J around the way, girl? No. This is the oldie show. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. This is a KMOJ. <laughs> Dusty. I'm in here doing all kind of crazy things that people wouldn't believe. I might just get up and start going. <laughs> I do that though. <laughs> Earth, Wind and Fire, Shylites, ISD Brothers, Stylistics, Funkadelic, New Birth, George Clinton, Spinners. Did I say Earth, Wind and Fire? Barry White, Cameo. I play everything. <laughs> if it came out in the 70s, I got it. This is what I grew up listening to. As I said, I'm from Chicago. Started out in a little town called Gary, Indiana. You may have heard of it. If you get out of there alive, you did all right. <laughs> so how come they call you Chili? That started way back when I was a teenager, DJing in a skate rink. <laughs> and um, you're not gonna tell people this. Huh? <laughs> no, but I used to DJ at a skating rink, and every time I come down, would come down, they would say, um, "Oh, that was a good job, great, you cold, cold as ice." You know, it's just cold, man. But what you do is so cold. You know, we like it. You know, cold, chilly. It just kind of stuck. Lord, it's a real Ohio Players, an album called Fire, came out in 1974. I'm gonna play a selection, I believe, Running from the Devil, which will go very well with this record, which is speaking about life and a real mother for you. If I could change the world with this, I would. <laughs> I enjoy having an effect on people's mood. I think that's basically it. What kind of effect is it with this stuff? Kind of like reminiscing, you know, going back down memory lane, you know, remembering times that have gone past, you know. So each song is associated with some time, or era. I'm sure you know that, in your life, something that you were doing, a special person, a special place, that type of thing. Camo J. Yeah, I want to uh, request. What would you like to hear? I want to be free by the Ohio Players. And okay. Yeah, and I'm, I'm a new person to the, to the Twin Cities, man. I just moved here from Milwaukee, so you know, I want to hear that jam. <laughs> okay. All right, then, brother. All right. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> this station in, in this city is uh, 
a phenomenal thing. I mean, a lot of people would be very disappointed if anything was to happen to KMOJ. It would be a hurting thing because of, of the music primarily and then the, some of the issues that are discussed here on public affairs programs such as black folk and street talk. These issues deal directly with the black community. And this is what the people want to hear. They want to know that uh, the things that are important to them are not being looked over, you know? Someone takes interest, you know? That's what they want to know. They need to know that. And as a community, that will make the community stronger, you know? If they know and believe that people are with them in their struggle. Mother, mother, there's too many of you to cry. Brother, 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 there's far too many of you die. The heartbeat of the cities and the soul of the grassroots. KMOJ, the heart and soul of the cities. Good evening and welcome to Street Talk. The views and opinions expressed on this program are not necessarily those of KMOJ, the staff, management, or board of directors. And now your host, Ron Edwards. Good evening. I'm Ron Edwards, and this is Street Talk Twin Cities. We're going to take a look at a number of issues that continue to swirl about. Today, 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 friends and relatives of Tysell Nelson stood over a place in the snow where the young man fell, where the young man fell. Was Tysell a member of a no, gang? No, he was. No, he wasn't. Yes, clearly gang involvement. There was an incident. Everyone knows and understands that, but that incident in itself became questioned. The issue is right or wrong. The issue is justified homicide. Did he or did he not have a gun? One bullet had been fired. Blood stains today were evident on the snow. And what they're asking us to do is to write them a check that says, sure, go ahead and do that. You can kill all the brothers and sisters in these organizations you want. And we in the black middle class mm -hmm. and we in the white community are gonna sit back and let you do it and say, oh, they deserve that because they're gang. Stop, stop the violence. We don't get no justice. They don't get no peace. We know that unity happens through struggle. If you don't and come to our community, you don't live in our community, you don't break bread with us, you don't even get your hair cut in our barber shops. The officer fired once with his department issued shotgun. Just a dark face is not enough. We need someone that's compassionate to what's going on with us. We're not asking for someone that's going to hate the police, no. 1990 has not been a real positive year for youth. Teen pregnancy is up. Uh, we have had 22 uh, murders uh, deaths of young people, people under 21. So as far as I'm concerned, I've been to at least 10 funerals this year, and that was 10 too many. Some of the ideas may seem controversial, and some of the ideas may seem like shocking, but these are kids. So whether you like to hear it or not, or whether it shocks you or not, these are what kids are thinking. So if you want to hear from kids, that's what I'm giving to you. What about you teen parents out there? Um, you young folks who got pregnant, you have the kids now, you're no longer pregnant, the mystery's over, you got the kids, you're toting them up and down the block, and everybody said, ooh, they're so cute. Tell us how you got into that predicament, and what do you think might have prevented you from getting uh, pregnant and, and going through with the whole thing? I have kids of my own, I have two kids, they're twins, and I think it should be taught when you're younger in school instead of waiting until you're in junior high because I got pregnant at 14, which, mm -hmm. you know, I regret it, but now that I think about it, my kids have what they want, I got what I want, but I still think it should be taught when you're younger instead of waiting until you're in junior high, because when you're in junior high, a lot of times it's too late. Yeah, and I know a lot of schools are fighting that. They're saying that if, if I'm going to tell my son or daughter about sex in the fourth or fifth grade, that means they, I'm going to destroy their innocence, when I think their innocence is destroyed every time they watch TV. It's not just education. They have to be taught, too, but it needs to start at home. You know, you have to have that at home, mm -hmm. as well as in school and every place else. You know, if, you, if your mother's out doing, you know, sleeping with this person, that person, well, mm -hmm. what kind of role model is that for you? 
Okay. As a young girl. But I, I don't know. Should it change? Should a woman have kids and just throw away all the little things she might want to do because she doesn't have a man and just dedicate herself to kids and be a flying nun? Or I don't know how, is it a, the balance? I mean, I'm, I'm putting that question out to the public. It's hard to change, turn a kid around, but at least you can show them the options. And so that's what I try to do, show them the options. And that's why I stay here. I graduated from college. I didn't work for a corporation, which I could have. You know, been a buppy, ride a BMW, and just leave these kids alone, but I feel I owe them something because I grew up this way and somebody helped pull me out. Hello? Yeah. Um, I just have a comment to make. I think the black professionals are too busy being corporate James and corporate Joes and are overlooking the social ills of the community, but yet they're the same people who are willing to contribute that small dollar amount for the cause but when it comes down to taking action, they don't want to be a part of that. It's fine when you throw some money at the school, but you've got to go there too. They, they need to see, they need to be able to touch a role model. They can't just, you know, watch the Cosby show or whatever mm -hmm. and say, well, that's what I want to do because it's, it's not real when you mm -hmm. can't touch it. As far as I'm concerned, I try my best to make sure that people know everything that I know because I think it's crucial. Knowledge is key to improvement. We got another call. Uh, yeah, I think the problem here today is that not a, you know not just family men, but men in the community aren't stepping forward to see that the young men are guarded in the right direction. I hear a lot of people say role models, and we're our leaders. Where's the Malcolm X's? Where's the Martin Luther, Dr. Martin Luther King? You forgot these people that we're talking about, the Marcus Garveys. They weren't gods. They were ordinary men who blew their nose, went to the bathroom, you know, <laughs> but you know, had back one leg at a time. Yeah, I mean, you know, they're <laughs> actual people, and these uh -huh. people are here in Minneapolis, they're in St. Paul, they're in New York, they're everywhere. And we talk about these role models like they're supposed to come out the sky with a halo. This is a predominantly white, Caucasian, you know, atmosphere, so obviously the most of the station's gonna be white. So if it's only 1% black, maybe 1% black station, that's why it's 1,000 watts, it's composed to 10,000 watts. So I just, I'm just appreciative that I'm able to be a part of a grassroots station. There's not many of those things around. There's so many things that you have to do, and it's kind of hard just being one little place to do it all, but we try our best. KMOJ plays the world's best music, 24 hours a day. That's the heart and soul. Hi, you're listening to Cool Runnings. This is Cheryl, and I'll be with you until 2 o'clock today with some music to shovel by or dig your car out or whatever you happen to be doing this afternoon. So crank up that stereo. One good thing about music, when it hits, you feel no pain. So hit me with music, yeah. Hit me with music now. Most weeks I get calls from people who just call up to say they're enjoying the show or um, people who have recently moved to Minnesota say, gee, it's great, I didn't know there was any reggae around here, and I turned on the radio and I heard this stuff and I really love it. It's fun to know that people really enjoy listening to the show and sort of focus their Saturday around picking up the show wherever they are. It's something about produce and reggae go together. I can't quite figure it out. That's why I like uh, Cheryl's show a lot, because she plays a lot of women's reggae and um, uh, a lot of... Um, uh, a lot of the newer releases and then some of the really, really nice old stuff. I like the danceable, real danceable stuff. I, I'm sort of a reggae purist, I guess. So, so I, I really get into people like Toots and Bob Marley, and I, I like the, the vocal groups like the Itos and Culture, that kind of sound, I'm really into that. There's so much message in reggae. We address so, mu so many uh, things with oppression and apartheid and, and economic struggle and all those kinds of things. So it's very relevant to a lot of the issues that, that African Americans are, are dealing with and being conscious with. And so I want them to know that, hey, we've been talking about this stuff for years. We've been singing about this stuff for years. <laughs> I've been playing reggae in this town for about 16 years. That's the background I bring, besides the fact that uh, that's the music I grew up listening to. There are so few 
local stations around here that really feature local music, and Camel J is one of those that has given exposure to some uh, local reggae musicians. The Maroons, I get to do stuff that I really enjoy and get paid for it. And here I get to, to bring it to a wider audience. I've heard the Maroons play before, I heard them play Cedar Fest. I really like them. They're, they're a good reggae band, they're really good. I came down here tonight to see the Maroons. I go down to see them a lot of times and I like to dance. Dance and have a good time. <laughs> Cheryl, how you doing? Hi, Abdul. Oh, uh, John Love. This is Abdul Kareem. How's everything? Pretty good. All right. How you, how you enjoying this nice, cold snow we're getting today? Oh, well. <laughs> I already okay, shoveled this man. morning. I have one guy who calls me every single week and probably has for months, Abdul Kareem. Never met him, but we've talked on the phone every Saturday. It's pretty exciting to know that he tapes the show every week, and he always has a lot of comments and a lot of questions about um, what I'm playing or requests. Yeah, I play them back to back. I play them back to back. Oh, that'd be super, super, super. I appreciate it. Sure. Okay, have a nice day. Well, you too. I enjoy right. the show. Okay, now. Bye. Bye now. People have heard of Jamaica, but people lots of times haven't heard about the other islands in the Caribbean and, and what's going on there and, and uh, the history of those islands. And I think that's the same for, for African music and African culture. There's such a, a, a wide set of issues and things to be learned. The Afro-American, especially, especially the youth, the Afro-American youth, they should listen to more reggae and uh, progressive music. They should listen to UB40, uh, Elton John, a lot of the groups from England because they're, they're, they're sending out messages to en enhance the business and social and economic fiber in the society. When I was growing up in Jamaica, we didn't have TV. I mean, really, the radio was our only form of communication and exposure to anything that was going on anywhere. So every experience that, that I remember has music in the background because you play your radio as many hours as you're awake at home. It was this constant uh, background sort of uh, filler to your life. You're listening to 89.9 FM, KMOJ, Minneapolis, St. Paul. This is Cool Runnings. I'll be with you until 2 o'clock today with reggae and soca. In fact, coming up at the top of the next hour, the soca set will be It's kind of like people write them letters about problems and stuff, and, and he'll yeah, answer, answer them like a dear Abby or something. Like they'll say yeah. something like, well, my husband was cheating on me. What <laughs> should I do? Tyrone, I miss him terribly, and our sexual chemistry is incredible. Leave, Leave him. <laughs> Leave him, you know. Like a, like, it's like a comedy. Whenever we meet, our passion is like a towering inferno mixed with a rocket ship to the moon. Yeah, that's where you going, Alice. <laughs> Turn he comes up with some interesting solutions <laughs> to some problems. And it's just so good to hear him. You keep pulling toward each other like a big old lust magnet. And it's wrong, wrong, wrong. This is not Tyrone's adultery service. What you want me to do, call him and find out why he ain't calling you? Let the man go back to his family and see if you can break this habit. Because that's what it is, darling. You're addicted to lust. Tyrone! I don't know who's coming in behind me. Oh, you don't? Nope. Nope. They on the schedule, they got JB, who's the rookie. He ain't been trained in yet. So I don't know. If you want to pull all of these down, start all over and say, well, okay. When I get on the air today, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to play my CD first. You go to your CD. In a place like KMOJ, I wasn't aware of it when I first came up here. This more or less is a school. You know, for a lot of people that come here, haven't been to school. So they come here and they learn how to operate a boy the function of radio. I'm still learning uh, about radio. I, I don't think that uh, anyone will ever say that I know enough about this uh, particular business because uh, like uh, a sign that I read once uh, before that says uh, life, is, life is hard, radio is harder. You have three card machines, two turntables, and two CD players. That's all the time in the world. You can start a world war in that time. All right? 
You can have enough time to queue up everything that you need to have queued up. I'm glad because I've been able to take some of the knowledge that I've gained and help someone else as a volunteer. Chico pretty much gave me a lot of room and said, this is what you do, try it. And that's really actually how I learned the best, you know, just doing it. Every activity that goes on on the air has to be recorded in this book. It's FCC regulations, I'm sure you guys are really familiar with that. We train people out of this community that could not afford to go to Brown or Tech or some of the, uh, the, the, the high class or standard uh, broadcast schools. Uh, gave them an option, gave them something to do, took them off the streets, gave them a trade, uh, gave some of them hope that there was something else that they could do, gave some of them an idea that they didn't even know that they had. Know where these are, you can do it blindfolded. Count them, one, two, three, four. Joe is blind, and Joe runs turntables and stuff like a pro. Now, I know, you ain't gonna let Joe outshine you, and you got too good, a, you do have good eyes, don't you? Yeah, all right. Halfway good. You look like a Ninja Turtle, man. I was freaking out every single Saturday. Uh, I, I think I probably had my fair share of dead air and uh, strange noises in the studio and you know all that kind of stuff. I even had the transmitter go down once I mean I was talking and it just cut out completely and I just stood there and threw up my hands. I didn't know what to do. <laughs> so it's been a real big learning experience. 89.9, we're seven minutes on the PM side of a five o'clock drive time Friday. I'm Blair D. You're tuning your number one where we triple the music. That means a We're looking for announcers, good announcers. We're not looking for black announcers to sound black. We're looking for announcers that want to be good professional radio announcers. What they're trying to do in the community is what I respect. And the reason why I've worked here so long and haven't tried to, um, you know, I haven't just quit, you know, because it's been rough. A lot of times I pay for my own transportation. I bring my own records for this show. All of the expense falls on me. I'm compensated nothing. It's not that we're depriving them. What we're trying to do is learn as fast as you can. And we'll try and help you get to another radio station. You have to believe in what we do and you have to believe in what you want to do. Uh, some are not like that. Some demand uh, well, to be paid right off. They feel that they're worth it. And we're, we're not saying that they're not worth it. We're just saying that we're just not set up to do that. This is most important to me to get, to have this solid. So whenever I'm ready to move on, I'll have an impeccable record. It's nothing, you know, they can say, well, okay, great. We need him. Hire him, you know. Offer him 60000 a year. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be ready for that, huh? Oh. I'm ready today. <laughs> I'm not training announcers here to stay at this radio station for the rest of their lives. Uh, the Center for Communication and Development, KMOJ, are training these people so they can go out there and deal with real radio in the real world. If we don't become real radio, then we're only fooling ourselves and really fooling those particular people that we can say, okay, you can leave the nest now, you can go out there. And they can get out there and find out they don't know how to work a CD player. They've never seen anything about modulation or know anything about FCC rules and regulations. You're dead. First of all, straight wrong, wrong, wrong right turntable. Aha, dead air. <laughs> out of here. All right? Yeah. That's a week off. <laughs> that's, a, that's a promise. I feel if they fail, I fail. And I would have a hard time living with that, uh, especially for the community. So if you get a show, what kind of music are you going to play? Ballads. It'd be late night. <laughs> I mean, daytime is all right, but I like ballads. So it'd be love making music, actually. <laughs> You're listening to 89.9 Camel J, Minneapolis, St. Paul. Sounds in the background. Guy with less chill. Thirty-two degrees on the outside. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the rest is history. You know the story, but did you know 
God created. Kimio, Lonnie, Joe, Daphne, just to name a few, that makes Camel J gospel pop. I'm not looking, guys, in my church, so I'm forced to go looking on my own. God understands, he doesn't want me alone. Well, that's the oldest trick that the devil will use to make God's children fall and lose. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 Unbelievers and believers do not mix For dating relations This ain't no joke Don't disobey and be unequally yoked But sure was hard-headed She didn't agree She said I'm for Ben and Ben's for me But hold on And right now it's 8.38 And you're tuned to KMOJ Gospel in full effect We'll be back with much more gospel rap Blacks have been rooted in gospel And so it's a very strong part in the community And it's a very strong part of KMOJ. It's, you know, it's on seven days a week. For real good music that's always grooving. Now people say, hey, KMOJ. We've been around now since uh, 1980 as a business, my wife and I. And we had an ad on that program from 28 times a day. It was real helpful to us because it let people kn know that we were around. And we were the only area that had black hair care products for a long time. And uh, KMOJ was real instrumental in getting that message out to people. My alarm comes on and it's set to KMOJ. If I leave the music on, it's hard to go back to sleep. I have to get up. It's like, do, 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 do. the gospel is on. It's, like, it's just hard to go back to sleep on the gospel. Something with the name Music is a big part of my life, too. I'm real pleased with Camo J with the gospel music. I'm not into rap too much. You got people with rock in their head. You got people running around thinking Christ is dead. You got and if you have any comments or suggestions about the gospel rap, you can send them to KMOJ, 501 Bryant Avenue North. KMOJ. Yes, sir. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. How are you doing? Just fine. I, I just wanted a minute of your time that something was placed on my heart to, uh, to bring to your attention. When you do something different in gospel, a lot of people are very touchy on what you do for the Lord and how's it affect because, you know, it has that beat. They don't like it because they're saying it has that worldly sound, and a lot of rap has a worldly sound to it. Is it, is it the music that you have a problem with, or is it the, the, the style that they're doing? I mean, the rap itself? Or, or the beat? Or? Well, it's, 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 well, you see, it's, it's, it's the beat and the rap, okay, and uh, of what it makes the younger youth do. Uh, I, uh, Sir, excuse me, how can you say that? I mean, it's not a compromise. It, um, it's another form of praising the Lord. Everybody's it's the message that counts. I mean, it, it, it's, it's still a ministry. It's still getting the, the point across. See, you, it's, not your the mini, it's not your way of ministering. But I thank you. And if you'd like to give her any rebuttal before we hang up. <laughs> yes. Yeah, um, I'm... I'm oh, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I mean, no, you, I mean, I understand what you're saying, but okay, and I did think about this before I decided to put it on. Yeah. And I realized that, like I said, there are many types of gospel music, and gospel rap has been around for a while, but I avoided it yeah. simply because it wasn't something I liked, because yeah. I wasn't into it. But then I noticed that it was getting more and more sent to me, and there was like a young audience that we weren't reaching simply because everybody doesn't like every type of music. Yeah. And if we can bring somebody closer to God and what we do, we feel we have accomplished something. And just like there's a lot of young kids who have nothing to listen to, nothing to relate to. And so for us to play this kind of music, they can relate to it. Like MC Hammer, he's a big name, but he was once a gospel rapper. And see, and then he decided to come back and give the Lord thanks for everything he has done for him. We got the break just to make it today. All my life I wanted to make it to the top. Well, so far we have been getting very positive response about gospel rap. I mean, there has been a couple yeah. who have not, who don't understand why we're putting it on and the whole meaning of it. They consider it worldly and... Kumodi. <laughs> he did a song on one of his um, albums, and I decided to try it out. 
and it was called God Made Me Funky. <laughs> Like the fans that play me, like the stations that play me. Bust it, Lonnie. <laughs> Mainly with the music ministry, it's the message. Uh, there's gospel with, with jazz, you know, where it's just instrumentals. And that can also be something that can touch you. That's something that they've put all their selves into. Radio is on 24 hours a day. Uh, I listen to from OJ doing gospel music. You can pick up lots of different chords from other styles of music. So when I hear something that I want, I just go and press the button, record it, and I have it. Uh, having those people around to um, really be there for us, as far as um, announcing, playing, Introducing us to the latest music. Sometimes here in Minnesota, we don't always know what's going on across the country. And they work very close knit with the uh, with the community as far as promoting and getting the word out there about things that are going on around town. And um, couldn't make it without you, Camel J. <laughs> As we journey down life's road, many difficult problems unfold. Many puzzling circumstances arise. We seek the counsel of the wise. We search high and low, saying, somebody has the answer I know. In 1981, when I received Christ, that's when I began to um, write the church newsletter. And so then by being faithful, I just began to write poetry and been writing ever since. Give to him your heavy load, not one problem you need to hold. It's God's good pleasure to give you understanding beyond measure. Talking to Jesus, you'll never regret, for your every need will be met. Well, it takes a lot of preparation, a lot of time, and even self-denial of things that maybe I would like to do as a young person, because I have to really be dedicated. Once a week, it's started off once a week, then it extended to six days a week. So I spent a lot of time at the radio station. And we are so close and we work together in unity and encourage one another and very supportive. Yeah. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so
Major funding for KMOJ Heart and Soul has been provided by the Dayton Hudson Foundation on behalf of Dayton's and Target stores. Additional funding has been provided by Torps Music Centers, providers of quality musical instruments, including synthesizers, drums, and guitars, serving musicians for over 35 years. And by the Electric Fetus, we have what you want to hear in Minneapolis, St. Cloud, and Duluth. This program was produced by KTCA, a Minnesota original.